Hi, in this slide, I want to give you a quick overview of what I call my six boundary system. Um, and the metaphor here of, okay, all these employees are in a cage is not so much that the employees are fierce wild beasts at the zoo, kind of like lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But rather, it, it gives, frankly, uh, heretofore, uh, control freak managers uh, a sense of security. Like, okay, I can, I can, I can expand the boundaries of, of, of people's spaces, but I can, I can titrate it. I can just do a little bit at a time and, and feel my way along. And I've never done this before. And I'm, this is a little scary to give them all this information and all this responsibility. But, but okay, as long as I understand the boundary idea and the cage, then I can, I can, I can, I can go along at my own speed. So uh, the idea here is, is that if we have. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a I'm I'm a person here. I'm an inside sales and and uh, on the warehouse or a truck driver or you know an outside sales guy or something. Uh, and I I kind of want to know well what should I be doing today? Well, the first thing that's going to organize me is this boundary, which is made up of our service value concepts, strategies, tactics, and and because we have conceived it and really articulated it in a very specific way. Like this is our number one niche of customers. These are our five most profitable customers in the niche. These are five most important net present value net profit target gazelle accounts in the niche. These are the eight metrics over here that add up to service value and what are we we're trying to get share of customer etc all the concepts that we've covered in the in the, in the previous sections are sort of uh, structured and systematically reminded with this boundary then secondly okay well how do I know if I'm doing a good job well you know in any job we can sort of say well there's quantity throughput there's quality, did you do it right the first time? There's timeliness, did we get it on time? There's even agility or flexibility for key accounts. Uh, how do we drop everything, make a heroic act happen, get back to the, to the normal grind? All these things, and then of course, just the, the service metrics over here will also shape, define the job, do whatever you have to, to make sure the, the service numbers happen every day. So we might call that also a balanced scorecard. We'll look at, there is another model called the balanced scorecard, which we'll look at the very end, but I don't like that so much for, for small service businesses, like a branch manager environment, uh, it's, it's too abstract. But uh, at any rate, then the third thing are just financial numbers. And these really, frankly, trivial or very symptom. They're sort of an afterthought because of all that we do at the root, root, root cause level is what starts to make things numbers look better over time. Uh, if there's one number that, that employees at any given profit center in a distribution environment get excited about from my personal experience, it is looking at the 12 month trailing margin dollars divided by the 12 month trailing average full time equivalent employees. How much margin dollar per warm body are we generating, or how much service value expressed in GP dollars do we get per person? Because that supports high wages, high profits, gain sharing bonuses, high profit after tax, reinvested per full time employee that gives us a, a cost of a future or a better future for all the employees. So that, you know, besides just margin per employee and what's projected gain sharing bonuses, um, most employees don't get that excited about this stuff. Not that we don't keep stop talking about it all the time. The next thing we have to do is constantly translate all of what we're doing here into, okay, and why is this good for you, individual employee? Here you are. What's in it for you, short term, long term? Why are you going to have more job security, job growth, job satisfaction, et cetera? Uh, some of the people will be in areas where they're learning and earning, they're cross training at different jobs. And as they do that, they may get a little uh, a merit bump uh, as a game to sort of raise our wages from average to above average. And then premium wages will come actually from gain sharing bonuses if we have them or not. Um, so we have to keep that radio station, WIIM, going all the time. Now the next thing is, uh, is actually uh, the most powerful but complicated concept, which is if we are in a service business, it's, a, it's an execution business. It's blocking and tackling. There's nothing complicated about distribution. We buy in bulk, we bring it in from a lot of places, break it down, reassort it, ship it out. We're a hub economic business. Um, 
Now, to do this brilliantly, every individual has to say, well, what is a black belt third, fourth, fifth degree performer for what I'm doing? No one ever asks those questions, typically in distribution. I'm a sales guy and I'm a good sales guy. We're all good sales guys. Remember, you know, you know, everybody's got kids. All kids are great. It's, it's Lake Wobegon. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a, an ideal world. We're all just great and we just do what we want. No more. We have to say, going forward, our culture we measurably have to define what one to 10 is for every job and cross train, you know, to be tens at a number of jobs. So we have to be continuously improving at the individual level. When we look at a service process that cuts between departments, that service process gives service metrics, the whole service team on that process has got to work together to become a 10. And the company in total has to become a 10 in the customer's mind as far as service brilliance. So how do we make this a non a, a measurable reality on a continuous basis? So it's gently, firmly, steadily in everybody's face that you know we're all getting better uh, because to to be, do what we want at our speed at the expense of the rest of the team at the expense of the customer isn't an option. And then the last point is how do we get everybody working together? And the way you do that is you, you have all, you put everybody in the same boat and then you, and everybody gets treated the same in the boat. So instead of having sort of a parent, child, boss, surf kind of relationship, we're all going to be adults. We're all going to be partners and we're all working together to make the service value concepts, et cetera, all happen. Uh, and a key way of doing this is just to say, look, you know, wages come from the marketplace. We're committed to trying to have above average compensation packages and then have premium economics based on premium results. So if the shareholders and the owner operators of distribution businesses, their, 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 their butts and their bonuses with bank covenants are tied into operating profit divided by inventory and receivables, that's, you know, return on controllable assets or ROCA, everybody can be tied into that. And everybody can contribute to it. So that's a, that's a boundary uh, guideline and set of metrics that we have to come up with. So these things are all going to become very specific and very measurable. And they're going to be around every employee all the time. So they'll know exactly what to do and why and how on their own. And together, they'll work together on a, on a bottom-up, what I call self-organizing basis. Now... The, you know, we'll come back and visit that concept of what is self-organizing energy and trust that'll be there. So that's an overview of the six boundary systems that we're going to cover uh, through this whole particular section. Thank you.